Good morning everybody. Today I'm going to show you how I make kimchi. There are quite a number of recipes and methods on the internet. I did a lot of research as usual. I picked this one. Um, it's a little mild because I don't like it too hot, you know, and I even don't put that much fish sauce in. If you don't like a fishy overtone, just leave this out. There's a fairly complicated list of ingredients. Here it is. Um, and I should mention one thing. You do have to get the Korean red pepper powder, okay? Uh, you can't just substitute chili powder off the shelf. It just won't taste the same. Uh, you can order this on, on the internet, so that's good if you don't have a specialty store near you. Now, this is a several stage recipe. First is preparing and soaking the cabbage, which has got to soak for like an hour and a half, so you do that first. Then you make the rice porridge, because that has got to cook and cool down, okay? And then you can get onto your um, blender stuff with the ginger and garlic and so on, and then do your chopping, and when you're all ready, you just kind of like put it together. Now, some people do these in plastic vats. Uh, I prefer to use my canning jars. I tested this recipe. It comes out really nicely, and it makes uh, three liters of kimchi approximately. So what I'm doing is I'm using a two liter and a one liter. You can use um, three one liters if it fits in your fits in your fridge better. I will leave it on the counter to ferment for a full three days and then I'll pop it in the fridge. So I'll just clean up my cutting board here for a minute. I need it for the cabbage. Now one mention on the daikon. You can't buy daikon in small pieces. You can't go to the store and say hey give me this much daikon which is about how much I'll be using and this has got a nasty bit with a scar so that was just coming off this is all they had and again it has to be Napa cabbage you cannot use plain cabbage for this it will not work Taiwan cabbage I wouldn't so uh, usually the outer leaves are no good just take those right off like if they've got cracks on the outside it's only a leaf or two rest looks pretty good maybe then that one too Okay, yeah, the rest is fine. I do recommend a cleaver for this if you have it. Just right down the middle. And each one and a half. I'm doing the small chunk method. I'm not doing the um, every leaf method. I know it's quite popular, but it's a lot more work. And if you're just starting at this, keep it simple. So what you're going to do is cut out that gnarly bit there. You're going to do that for each section. And then just cut that in half. And if you need to get off that other bit, this is going to be a little messy at first, but you'll just get used to it. Now, so what you want to do is hold it like that, and then just cut it into bite-sized pieces. Pop that in your bowl. I do each quarter before I salt it. And you're going to be rinsing this extensively at the end. So, I wouldn't worry about chopping it all and rinsing it. I start salting it immediately. So start with a quarter cup of salt. This is a rough estimate. Depending on the cabbage, you may need to go up to half. And I just sprinkle some over. And what you want to do, there's a kind of art to this. You want to rub the salt on the cabbage like that, but you don't want to crush it, okay? You don't want to bruise it excessively, but you also want to be working the salt in. And be fairly generous with this because what you're doing is you're getting the water to come out of the cabbage. But you still want to retain texture in this so it's got like a nice kind of soft, chewy flavor. So that's good to start. And I'll just keep cutting and salting. So that's the last bit. And I haven't used quite a half. I did have to go back for more so I'll just put that back in and get in with both hands now and you can kind of feel 
there's salt grains on the surface so the important part is just gently rub don't squeeze hard because then you'll break up the cabbage and even after this short time I can already start it, start to feel the water coming out. So every half an hour you're going to turn it over to get the salt solution on the top and also to get the more crunchy pieces down to the bottom. And you're going to do that for a total of an hour and a half and then rinse, rinse, rinse. For the next bit, make the rice porridge. Now I just use normal sugar for this, you don't have to get fancy on this part. Okay, so just some sugar and the rice flour. Now, yeah, usually I would just get this at the Asian market. However, I did buy a box of an easily recognizable brand that you can buy online or get at some market so you don't buy the wrong kind because um, it's sweet rice, sticky rice flour. Okay, this is very important. All you need is two tablespoons of this. This doesn't sound like very much to make the porridge and what the porridge does is it acts like a kickstarter for the fermentation it's like when you're making bread and you put uh, sugar in the yeast mixture it's sort of like that water should be fine for this but I do have a ready supply of my good old chlorine free spring water and if you've got some of that by all means use it because uh, that way you always get the best ferment now I just cook this with constant stirring over medium heat and if you're concerned about it getting away from you turn the heat down a bit no worries about that because you definitely do not want this stuff to burn or you'll have to start again now when this starts to thicken up turn it down right away because else it will clump up really badly what you'll notice is it starts to get thick and clear at the same time. So I just chase those lumps around with a spatula, press them down. Yeah, when it thickens up, it loses any of the clear spots. You only see that while it's starting to cook. And when it looks nice and goopy, and thick like that. This is the consistency you want. Okay, just turn the heat right off, take it off the heat, spread it out to cool off faster. And you don't, you know, you could use a water bath, but it's not strictly necessary because the cat, uh, the uh, cabbage has to sit for at least another hour, right? And it'll be cool by then. While I'm waiting for my cabbage, I'm just going to keep going with my prep here and get the um, the daikon and the carrot ready so the carrot I'm gonna want to julienne that and I'm gonna do that in bits and the um, yeah so I'm gonna basically cut about this much daikon so why don't I just do that right now since I got my half a carrot take off the bruised bit see this way <laughs> this way you don't have to measure right it's like, oh, that much daikon. We're good. And again, like that. And in half. And just if you want to get super fancy, you can cut those in half too. But when it's all mixed in in the kimchi, you're honestly not going to notice it that much. So there's my good enough julienne. Definitely, definitely peel the daikon. This I cut down the middle. So quarter it first. And then the same thing. And there's the daikon. Give your green onions a good rinse. Just cut off the little root bits at the end. Unless you've got some severely wilted parts on the green all of this is going in now this is big chunks okay you want to cut these literally in three-quarter to one inch pieces all the way along 
Now if your bowls won't fit all of it, just get another bowl. You don't want this rolling all over the counter. It's been a half an hour. So let's see where we are. Look at all that, eh? You can see, I don't actually want to zoom, but I'll just, you can see it from there. That pool on the bottom. That's the lovely pink salt. So I'm just going to pick it up, turn it over, kind of feel it up a little there. See how it's coming along. That's feeling quite nice. It has a good smell to it as well. Now, see, and that's for the point. See, that's getting soft, but it's not mushy. It's still all in one piece. That's your target. Okay, back in the sink, another timer. So now it's time for the savory stuff in the blender. Now, I find a piece like this is very difficult to peel. And I really like the external layers of my fingers. So what I do is I just kind of trade off and trim as much as I can gently. I know most of the flavors in the outer skin, but the piece is big enough that it won't matter. Now that's going in the blender. So just a rough chop for that. Now this one, I always lose the outside layer because you've got to remember when you're fermenting food, you do not any you do not want any rotten bits in it at all. So that's just just small pieces are good. I just park those in the blender cup while I get the garlic ready. Yeah, so I just break up the cloves. Now I can see this one's gone bad, so that's going to go. I always start with a head. You're going to lose a clove or two most of the times. These are pretty simple. Just cut the end off, smash them. Make sure all the peel is off. And do take the time to inspect each one to make sure there's no bad bits. Now, that one is a little dusky. I'm just going to we have more than enough garlic, so I'm just going to peel off that little bit. Just toss all that in here. I start this on low at first. And just pulsate it a bit. You don't need a lot of water. But just put in like a couple of tablespoons. Is enough to just get it going. Okay, so when you got a good puree there, and there's no chunks, you can turn it out in your bowl. So there's the aromatics, the ginger and garlic and so on. Now, this is ice cold, which is great. So get your spatula and get all of this in there. So mix that up. Get your fish sauce if you're using that. And I will put that in the recipe as optional. Now one thing I should say. It just sort of adds a hint of flavor in the back. It's not that strong. You can always cut it back to like a tablespoon or something and it does help to ferment. Then you'll notice that the aromatics will actually tone down the smell nearly immediately. And I use an even half cup for this and it comes out just fine. Pop that bag back in the freezer. Once you have that all mixed in, add your vegetables. And turn those over in the mix. It's been an hour and a half. And let's just test a piece. Yeah, that's just got that nice wobbly that you want. So I'm going to fill this up with water. Cold water. See, it's frothing on its own. I just make it worse. That does, that's not going to rinse it. It's just the water itself that'll do it. So I just fill it up enough that I can get in there with my hand. And what you want to do is sort of gently kind of just rub the 
the cabbage, pour that into the strainer. Yeah, do take advantage if there's salt in the bottom to just rinse that out now. Put it back in. Repeat the, tw the process twice again. Once it's rinsed to your satisfaction, yeah, I had to go more than three times because I put too much salt on it. This one I mean, you should, you should rinse it to taste, not just do a fixed number of rinses and just make it. Well, that sort of applies to any food. You should always taste your food, right? Add the vegetables, put in some. Mix it up a bit with a spatula. Pop in the rest. Now I just do a quick mix with a spatula. It may be my imagination, but there's something about kimchi that it always seems to turn out better when you get your hands in there. With gloves. Because you don't want your bare skin on this chili and whatnot. Okay. And that way you gently make sure that all of it's coated and feeling yummy and all mixed in properly. And you can only actually get that feel by hand. You can't get that with a spatula. I'm going to set the jar in a bowl in case I miss. You can either get a ladle. I just use the spatula and carefully put some in. And if you miss, the bowl is clean. Now, while that's about three quarters full, I'll get the other jar. Because you got to remember, this is fermenting. You have to leave headroom on these jars. Even with vents, it'll get away from you. So I'll fill up the little one for a bit. And remember to mix it up. Before you spoon it in, get some. Make sure that you got equal amounts of sauce that's forming from the salt and the spices. You could use a canning funnel as well. I probably should have gloves on now, but I'm just going to remember not to touch my eyes or any other body part until I can soap my hands up. This is really important at this point. I just got a wet paper towel for this, and make sure that not only is the outside clean even more important that the threads are clean okay because you don't want stuff kind of just you know randomly rotting up top okay so the last bit is you want to make sure that all the goodies are under the juice you can get baking cups that are unbleached chlorine free and guess what just fit the jar like so nice okay so what you do is just pop that in there and use your fingers to make contact and just lay that on top and to help it along again I do not strictly have to do this but I do drop in a pickle weight for good luck so then I finish off my jars Here it is all ready to go to start to ferment on the counter. Keep it out of direct sunlight. Let it ferment at room temperature for three days, at which point it's ready to put in the fridge to continue fermenting. You can taste it in between um, to see. But yeah, three days is pretty good. Um, now, this term is cost effectiveness. You know, once you have made the initial outlay uh, for the right chili powder which is like it cost me what $35 Canadian uh, for a kilo bag and I only use half a cup to make three liters of this so after the initial investment yeah the food cost on this drops dramatically and it gets much cheaper than this little jars you would buy out of the organic cooler so this is how I make kimchi um, I hope you enjoyed this and learned something and give it a shot see you again